Our political panel, Labor MP Amanda Rishworth and Liberal MP Jason Felinski with me. Thank you both for your time. We better start with that Labor review, Amanda Rishworth. I'm sure uh, you've scoured through your copy already. Weak strategy that could not adapt to a change in leadership, cluttered policy agenda, an unpopular leader. Do you agree with everything you've read so far? Well, look, I think um, that this review is a really important review. I think um, if you just keep making the same mistakes and don't learn from the past, then that's a problem. So I think this uh, review does provide um, some really important uh, information uh, that can help guide us uh, going towards the next election. But that's where my focus now firmly is. We've had the review. Um, mm. We've had uh, a lot of discussion. Um, now our job is to get on hold this government to account, um, a very bad government and I think one of the things that was uh, in the report was uh, the comment that the government was a very bad government and part of our important role is to make sure that the focus mm. is on the government and the mistakes well, that they're making. Yeah, it was written by Labor figures so maybe not uh, breaking news that particular observation. Uh, nonetheless it did also talk about policy being cluttered, Amanda Rishworth, and saying there's nothing wrong with bold policy, but fewer policies will need to be taken to the next election. Does that mean a, a smaller target from Labor? I know you're not saying small target, but smaller? Well, look, I think that obviously as we work towards the next election, we'll have to have a very good look. But of course, one of the things um, is that uh, if you have policy out there, we need to make sure that the electorate knows about it. If the electorate, uh, if there's uh, people and groups that benefit uh, from our policies, mm. um, then we need the time uh, to, and uh, the space to be able to make sure uh, that in an election Right, but that context, means, you know, there's only um, so many you can explain. So it's fewer policies and it's smaller. The target isn't that all just a logical uh, flow on? Well, well, as I said, we'll we'll uh, uh, we'll have our policy agenda going forward. But uh, as the review said, it was uh, often very complex. Uh, there were a lot of them. Uh, there was questions around the timing. So, of course, uh, our fundamental. Uh, challenge is to make sure we develop good policies but importantly make sure the electorate know right. about them and know about how they will benefit um, and I think that's uh, an important part um, of uh, our challenge going forward. In, in a cluttered day, okay. uh, cluttered news, uh, news it is hard it to is uh, cut day. through but that's what we've got to do. So, Jason Helinski on behalf of the bad government what did you make of the report? Um, look, I haven't read it actually, Tom, but um, you know, I, I feel for Labor. Um, I'm a member of the Liberal Party. We've lo lost our fair share of unlosable elections, and these are very difficult periods. But you know, I hope for the country as a whole that uh, Labor, you know, has the review and rejoins the battle for ideas because it makes the Parliament and our nation a better place. So let's hope uh, Amanda's right and they can put this um, behind them and, and rejoin that battle. Very magnanimous. You, I'm used to you uh, throwing more barbs. Maybe you're missing a usual offside. What, what about the lesson for the Liberal Party here? I mean, Labor's not going to be seemingly as complacent as it was. This report basically said it never shifted its attack from Malcolm Turnbull onto Scott Morrison. Clearly Labor's not going to be indulging any more hubris before the next election. So there's a little warning for you guys as well too. Well, as I say, I mean, the Parliament's best when everyone's kept on their toes. I mean, I, don't, I, don't, I actually don't agree with that proposition. I think that Bill Shorten was a very good leader of the opposition. Um, it was a very willing Parliament, and uh, one would almost say that maybe too willing, and Labor really took no prisoners in the last term of Parliament. Um, so I don't think that's actually a, a fair reflection on Labor in opposition in the last Parliament or on Bill Shorten as leader of the opposition. Is that just you starting the Get Bill Back campaign? Um, you are such a cynic, Tom, and on this day of all days, I would expect better from you. <laughs> Amanda Rishworth, do you, does it, what does it say about Bill Shorten? Is he electable? Uh, well, look, um, the review really said that there's no one aspect that led to Labor's defeat. Um, it uh, identified that um, there was issues around uh, popularity. Um, and, of course, that is an issue for all opposition leaders. It is a really tough gig. Um, it also identified um, that there were some strengths around uh, Bill's ability to beat Scott Morrison in, a, in all three debates. So, uh, look, it is a, a, a difficult challenge. Uh, 
challenging role to be opposition leader, but certainly the review uh, didn't identify just one factor. It identified a lot of factors, no. and, um, Still and I think that's yeah. important to recognise. Still was a factor. Anyway, we had Jay Weatherall say he's not unelectable in his particular point of view. Jason Polinsky, as for the government, you've told the very the good government, your Tom. best place, yes. the, the excellent government you claim to be. Um, oh, well, you know, you've, you've, you've admitted as much too. Debatable. <laughs> There's no debate best about place it. To, we finish that debate. To handle the economy. Now, yes. amidst all of this, there's a lot of calls for economic reform. And, and you're for this as well, Dominic, Dominic Perrottet now saying this is the time. I mean, when we haven't had major reform under the coalition yet, have we? Uh, no, I think we've had some major structural reform under the coalition government. But what Don Perrottet is talking about and what some other state leaders are starting to sort of talk about on the air, or putting their toes in the water, if I can put it that way, is that our federation has the problem where um, the Commonwealth raises 80% of the taxes, but the states do 80% of the spending. And that disconnect in our federation is leading to some suboptimal outcomes, as economists like to say. And I think that mm. this is a big opportunity where you've got clearly a reforming treasurer in Dominic Perrottet in New South Wales, who's leading other treasurers in this discussion about how can we reform um, Commonwealth and state relationships to create a system that is more dynamic and encourages the states to undertake more economic reform than they currently are. Is that what you're after here? The states to come as a cohort, whether it's all of them or perhaps all minus one, and then the federal government says, right, well, you're on board so we can actually talk about the detail now? Well, look, the whole point of federations as a system of government is a separation of powers. It's meant to be difficult to govern because you want to make government you want to divide the power that governments have for various reasons. And um, so this is not going to be easy. It does require the states to come to the table with goodwill and people understanding that there will be winners and losers, but overall the nation will be better off. And I think this is a right. moment where we should really um, press forward and undertake serious conversation on that and not waste this moment in time. Amanda Rishworth, are you, is Labor open to the conversation at least? Oh, well, look, obviously making our federation work better and uh, have better cooperation between the states and territories is important. Uh, that was something we did in government. Who would have thought it would have uh, been so hard to get a national curriculum, um, which uh, has um, actually served our country very well and, and, importantly, our students well. And I think that's where I would want to be focusing on, is what are the outcomes? Um, what are the outcomes for our nation and what are our outcomes for communities? And and it is important in any of these types of reforms to uh, carefully look at those communities that could be left behind. I think, uh, as Jason said, there are, is often winners and losers. Uh, but we can't um, just, for example, say, well, uh, this state's performing well, so they'll get all the money, they'll get all the economic activity. We've got to make sure mm. uh, there is balance across the country and that right. uh, communities are not left to wither on the vine. I want to touch on childcare, Amanda Rishworth, your area. We do have the situation where the subsidy, um, the, the new subsidy in the system it works, or the way it's working at the moment, about 90000 could be asked at least to pay back a debt. It's being described as partly an IT glitch. What do you make of this? Yeah, look, it's very, very concerning. We've had many, many families contact me about problems uh, with owing a debt to the Commonwealth. Um, and many families are saying uh, they don't actually think they have a debt. And when they've uh, rung up mm. and uh, chased it down, they actually haven't had a debt. But the letter doesn't say that. The letter just says, you owe a debt. And I'm worried that many families are seeing this and are just paying the debt when indeed they don't owe the Commonwealth anything. And we've had... Uh, uh, one example um, that's come to our attention where uh, the individual was told three times they didn't have a debt but continued to be pursued uh, for a debt when it comes to the childcare subsidy. Partly it comes back to an IT glitch but it also comes back to the complexity of the system. Well, it's been, I mean, it's been simplified, so one payment instead of two. You do have a situation with these types of payments that you need to ask people what are you going to earn and some people don't have a smooth income to be able to estimate what they get. That, that's always going to be the case. It's going to be a system that, that has those sort of you know, ups and downs. 
So there's nothing wrong in of itself, is there, for, uh, with the government asking at the end of the financial year for that money back? It's just got to do it in the right way, is that what you're saying, and not be inaccurate? Well, no, I, I think there's a couple of issues. One, there is the IT glitch, which is an issue, but when we're talking about one in six families are owing a debt to the Commonwealth, surely we can do it better, because families don't have this extra money in their pocket. In fact, they've never received any of the childcare subsidy in their bank account. This money's gone directly to providers. So I think when we're saying that one in six families so far have uh, received mm. a debt, we need to have a look at the system. Now families are telling us well, how do that we know they it's not people on their estimates? Uh, you know, either not being uh, well, well, honest or well, forgetting to change things? No. Th their circumstances, many people's circumstances are changing and what these families are telling us is they ring Centrelink and update their details mm. straight away, whether that's activity or income. So in fact we had one example where uh, the uh, individual in question uh, thought she'd be really cautious and estimate, overestimate by $20,000 her income. She thought that would surely cover her uh, and she ended up with a debt. So uh, because right. people's lives are aren't simple these days. They do go up and down, their hours go up and down, their income goes up and down. We need a system that is working for families and not lumping them with debt at the end it, of the it's, financial it'd year. It'd have to be a bit of a worry, Jason Velinsky. Nothing annoys voters more than this type of failure within government services. Yeah, look, Tom, um, Amanda's absolutely right. Uh, the whole idea of, cha of these changes was to simplify the system and to make it easier for families to get back into the workforce and to make sure that early childhood education was reaching as many people as possible and the availability was as high as possible. In any changeover, you're going to have um, times when it doesn't necessarily work out as well as you wanted it to, call it an IT glitch, call it a misunderstanding by users. Um, my understanding is that 87% of people, so this is occurring as people are putting in their tax return. My understanding is 87% of people are actually receiving top out payments because their estimates were on the, on the low side, so they're getting more money. 13% um, of right. people um, are being told that they've actually been overpaid and may need to pay some back, of which I understand 24 families have put in a formal review application for that. Um, if Amanda um, has you know, specific examples, well, yeah, of course the Minister and the Department will immediately look at that. Our primary goal is to make sure that we get this right, and if there are problems that those, pro as you say, Tom, they don't continue into the future. So, I mean, we're primarily aimed at making sure that childcare is extended to as many people as possible so that it benefits as many Australian families as possible. Amanda Ishworth, Jason Falinski, we'll leave it there.